Hey, Jordan, welcome back tonight for part two of the book club. And as we left off last time, could you continue where you yeah, endorse some of these off. books? Yeah, because uh, we have so many important books that are out there that that I have uh, you know, uh, accumulated over the years that I really want people to have copies of while you can still get them. This is something people don't realize. There are a lot of good stuff out there that you can't get anymore. So while it's a, while it's available, you need to go on Amazon and get the the books uh, that I'm recommending while they're still available. Who knows? They may not be there next week. So uh, we we'll, we have a lot of books, forty of them, in the first two shows. So let's get on with with uh, part two because there's a lot more books we want to talk about. Now, if you've ever wondered about the United Nations, there have been many, many books written pro and con, for and against the United Nations. But I think the best single book ever written is a little paperback. And that paperback explains so much about the UN that nobody has ever heard. It's called None Dare Call It Treason with John Stormer. John, S-T-O-R-M-E-R, John Stormer. You can still get it on, on Amazon. It's called None Dare Call It Treason. He explains how the UN was really founded, who actually did it, where the money came from, and it's, it's quite well, a story. What gets me is, you know, the United States gets one vote as the same vote as Ghana, Papua New Guinea, and these other countries, yet we're paying for a third of the budget of the UN. Yeah. And now they're coming after everybody's guns and... It's crazy. Well, it's, uh, but it's, uh, you want you want to know how crazy he is? Yeah, get this book called "None Dare Call It Treason." That's crazy, because that really explains how it all happened, where the UN really came from. Another uh, book and another man that you have to know about, who I think is just really sensational. His name is Peter Lavenda, L-E-V-E-N-D-A. Peter Lavenda. I've heard him, and I've got his books, and I think there's you know, nobody like Peter Lavender in my book because he's fascinating on Nazism, the secret societies, the occult orders behind the Nazis, behind world governments, uh, how all of this stuff works with the church and the church's connections with the Hitler and the Vatican and the uh, Vatican rat line and and what a, what a story of betrayal of the human race when you find out how many secret societies and occult orders are connected to Adolf Hitler, to Nazism, to the communist world movement, to, to Soviet communism, fascism. What's really going on on this earth behind the scenes? You are not prepared. You know, you haven't been told a half of it. Well, Peter Lavenda is an extraordinarily important author. And his book is called Unholy Alliance, A History of the Nazi Involvement with the Occult. Again, this is all going to be on our website, so go check it out. A long time ago, a long time ago, back in 1959, I came across two books that changed my heart, that just blew me away, by a lady named Nesta Webster. Nesta Helen Webster, W-E-B-S-T-E-R, Nesta Webster. Two books that she wrote. She wrote quite a few, but these two I highly recommend, and you can still get them on uh, Amazon. One is called World Revolution, The Plot Against Civilization. And if you read that book, which was published, I don't know, back in 40s, late 40s, or early 50s, something like that, she explains the whole world communist movement, how it works, how the whole international Illuminati system works from the Europe, from, uh, you know, where it came from, all the symbols and everything, and where it all came from. It's called World Revolution, The Plot Against Civilization. What a story. And her second book, which is equally as interesting, and to me even more interesting, is Secret Societies and Subversive Movements by Nesta Webster. She goes into all of the secret societies and fraternal orders uh, and the ancient world, and then the medieval world, and coming out of Europe in the, in the age of the church, and all the different cults and sects and, and secret societies, especially in England, uh, with the Stella Matratina and, and Alistair Crowley with his uh, OTO, and who these people really were, and where the money came from, and wh what they were really doing. And you know, ring. The, yeah, all, all of it. Fascinating, Nesta Webster, Secret Societies of Subversive Movements, and The uh, World Revolution by Nesta Webster. 
Um, you know, you've heard me talk about the 16 different uh, religions of the world that had a crucified Christ. There's a book by Kersey Graves written many, many, many years ago. The name, the author was Kersey Graves, G-R-A-V-E-S. The book is called The World's 16 Crucified Saviors, in which he outlines the 16 or 15 different major religions of the world that had the same story as Christianity, a savior dying on a cross and being resurrected, and his mother was a, a Virgo. I mean, his mother was, yeah, Virgo, the virgin, and the father was a, a carpenter and all of this. And so there were many, many different uh, religions before Christianity existed had the same story. And so it's a fascinating book called World 16 Crucified Saviors by Kersey Graves, G-R-A-V-E-S. Now, there's another book I think everybody should know about. I don't know if you're going to be able to. I think they still have copies of it, but it's, it's really interesting. As um, a, a rabbi told me about this book many years ago, and it's called Jesus and Moses Are Buried in India. Fascinating. Mm. Jesus and Moses Are Buried in India. Uh, Subtitle: Birthplace of Abraham and the Hebrews. Well, I've talked about this many times, about how uh, the Jewish religion, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Osiris, Isis, Hor- uh, Osiris, Isis and Horus, uh, Father, Son, Holy Ghost is always a triune God. Well, we can trace Judaism back to India. And so you know, all three of the major peoples of the book, uh, the Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all... Uh, say that they respect and they they all agree that they've all come from the uh, from the great prophet Abraham. That Abraham was the father of all three religions. Well, suppose there was no Abraham, and suppose it was actually the Brahmins, which it actually was. It could be traced back to the Brahmins, and you put an A in front of Brahmin because Abraham. Abraham. Yep, Abraham. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And so Abraham is uh, is where we get the Jewish religion. There was no Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. None of those three people ever lived. But there was a Brahmin religion, and the Brahmin religion believed themselves to be holy, and that they were above the uh, the, the normal people of India. And so the regular people were called the untouchables. They don't want nothing to do with the ordinary working class people. They were a holy priesthood, and they loved the, they loved their God, and God loved them. And so they were a, a holy priesthood, and they were God's chosen people. And then, therefore, uh, they were called Brahmins, where you put an A in front of because A Brahman. And the most sacred river to the Brahmins was called Saraswati. So it was the Brahmins were always known for their river of life. Their, 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 it, from what we get today, the Jordan River in Israel, the Jordan River is the holy river of God. No, no, it goes back to A Brahman and Sarah, Abram and Sarah. No, Saraswati River was the holy river for the Brahmins or the Abrams. So now you've got Abraham and Sarah Swazi. <laughs> Sarah yeah. Swazi. Right. And so you see that the whole Jewish religion is based on Hindu, ancient Hindu religion. And that's why, as I said to you before, that when Steven Spielberg was making a movie, uh, close in, no, uh, yeah. what was it, um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, you better go back and look at this book, Jesus and Moses Buried in India, Birthplace of Abraham and Hebrews by Jean Matlock, M-A-T-L-O-C-K. It's on our website. Get this book if you want to understand Steven Spielberg's Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Because where does uh, where does Indiana Jones go to look for the Lost Ark? Well, he's the best of the best, so where he would know where to go. So where does he go? He goes to Tibet. He goes to India, northern India, to Tibet first. Why? Because Steven Spielberg is a lot of things, but stupid is not one of them. He knows the story about Abraham and Brahmins and the and the and God's holy well, people. Well, Tibet is where the real swastika came from. That's right. I mean, it's came an inverted peace symbol. That's exactly right. It goes back to India. It goes back, and in the movie, uh, who does Indiana Jones find in Tibet when he goes there? If it's not the Nazis. Yep. 
And finally, he can nail down now where the lost Ark of the Covenant is. And where does he go to get the lost Ark of the Covenant? He goes to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem? No, he goes to Egypt. So what is that all about? He goes, first of all, to the Hindus and to Tibet. And from there, he goes to Egypt and finds the lost Ark of the Covenant. Well, you better go back and look at this book. It's called Jesus and Moses are Buried in India, the birthplace of Abraham and the Hebrews. The Hebrew religion, Jewish religion, the Christian religion, and the Islamic religion all can be traced back, if you want to do the, or want to do the homework, can be traced back to India, to the Hindus. That's the name of the tune. That's history. And, of course, my, my, my favorite of all is uh, of Manly P. Hall. Manly P. Hall was a dear friend of mine. Uh, I loved him. He was a wonderful and the most incredible mind you'll ever come across. I think he probably was the finest spiritual mind that any age has ever produced. Manly Palmer Hall was one of the most extraordinary spiritual men that has ever lived, period. I would don't mind saying that because he he wrote so many books, hundreds of articles, and and I don't know, maybe 30 or 40, 50 books gave thousands of hours of lectures, and he never one time championed any particular religion, never one time promoted any particular philosophy. What Manly P. Hall did was quite simply, he explained the whole world to his audience. Where things came from, where did these uh, cults come from, where did this cult, where did Islam really come from, not what you've been told or what you thought, but where did it actually start? Where did Christianity come from? Where did all the cults and the different movements of the world, all the political movements, where did they actually start? And this is what Manly P. Hall did. He never one time promoted any particular religion or belief system above the other. He was one of the greatest teachers that ever lived in this world at any age, at any time, period. And didn't the, we go to his, uh, didn't he used to write over in Silver Lake or Los Feliz? Didn't yeah, his, yeah, uh, no, he had, his... he had a he had a great university, a college, a university called PRS, Philosophical Research Society. Philosophical Research Society in Los Angeles was Manly P. Hall's uh, a great university and that it's he still built. Here. It's yeah. still here. You can still go over there today. And uh, but I would just suggest you get uh, just keep in mind Manly. M-A-N-L-Y-P Hall, H-A-L-L. Manly P. Hall was, with, without a doubt, in my mind, the, one of the greatest oh, teachers that ever lived. Great At books. any time, in any age, at any time, one of the greatest minds that has ever graced this earth was Manly Palmer Hall. And when you begin to listen to him uh, and, and get his books and read them, just um uh, well, I think in your library I saw hundreds of those books. That, oh uh, yeah, you know, I mean I've got uh, yeah. Of, uh, he of left his works. me. Yeah, he left me uh, his work when he passed away. Uh, they they called me and said, Mister Hall left left you um, all of his research <laughs> volumes. He left it to you, and I That's have great. Them. So <clears throat> there's another book we have here. Another uh, author I really like. And it's old. These are old books, but you can still get them out on Amazon. This one's by Albert Churchward. Albert Churchward, C-H-U-R-C-H-W-A-R-D. The book is called Signs and Symbols of Primordial Man. You've mentioned that book before. Yeah, many, many times I've mentioned it. This is Signs and Symbols of Primordial Man. The book and the subtitle is called The Evolution of Religious Doctrines and the Eschatology of the Ancient Egyptians by... Albert Churchward. What he's done, he's gone into the ancient world of the of the Egyptians, and showed all their ancient symbols and how they're used today, and what those symbols meant then, and what they mean today, and how they have influenced us. So we think that we're modern day, and we we've got new stuff. There's, like the Bible said, there's nothing new under the sun. Period. Now another. Uh, author who's no longer with us was L. Uh, Waddell. His, his name was L. It's, his last name was W. A. D. D. E. L. L. Waddell. Uh, his book is called The Phoenician Origins of the British Scots and Anglo Saxons. Uh, this is very important. 
Because if you want to understand the banking world, the international banks, the international cartels of the world, and where they come from, and the ancient history, and I've talked about that, the history of the ancient banking families of the world can be traced back into the Middle Ages, back to Rome, and from Rome back into the Grecian Empire, the ancient bankers and, and the guys behind the world scene who you know, control the, same, the world. The same families for <clears throat> centuries. For centuries. And so the book you need to get is called The Phoenician Origins of the Brits and the Scots and the Anglo-Saxons. So when you see where the British and the, and the Scottish people and the generally speaking the Anglo-Saxon people, where they actually came from, from the old Middle Eastern uh, Phoenician origins. Uh, this is where we went. Uh, they talk about where the word church comes from. Circe. Church, church comes from an old Phoenician goddess Circe. And Circe was able to hypnotize people and suck you in, and, yeah, <laughs> suck you in, take you into a home, lock the door, and feed off of you. That's the old Phoenician, ancient Canaanite uh, goddess, goddess, which yeah. today we uh, is call, uh, she was called Circe. Then, when the uh, when the Masonic order came back into Scotland uh, from the Crusades, they brought the worship of Circe with them. But in Scotland, Circe was called Kirk, K I R K R K E R K Kirk. And so uh, Mother Kirk was Mother Circe in the old ancient uh, world, and the Mother Kirk in English is Church, C-H-U-R-C-H. C-H. So Mother Church is Mother Kirk, and Mother Kirk is Mother Circe, and Mother Circe was the uh, enchantress who, who would hypnotize people, bring them into a house, take their minds away from them, lock them up, and eat them, and live off of them. Well, that's what the church is doing today. So you need this book, The Phoenician Origins of the Brits, Scots, and Anglo-Saxons. Now again, we talked about the Atlantis before with Charles Belletz. The only other book I would highly suggest you want to get if you're interested in Atlantis, Charles Belletz's book, which is on our website, but also Ignatius Donnelly. This was probably the first really good book written on many years ago, many, many years ago. Ignatius Donnelly, it's on our website, it's on Amazon, get it. Atlantis, the Antediluvian World. Probably one of the best um, all-around stories about Atlantis, where it came from, what Plato had to say, where it's found. So as far as I'm concerned, this is probably one of the best books on the market ever on Atlantis is Ignatius Donnelly, D-O-N-N-E-L-L-Y. Atlantis, the Antediluvian World. Go on our website, the top of my homepage, you'll see Amazon, click on it and get Atlantis, the Antediluvian World. Lots of people ask me uh, questions, uh, uh, you know, all kinds of interesting questions. Well, where do we, where do we go when we die? And, and what does this mean? And what does that mean in our life? And why, why does this happen? And why does that happen? Well, Manly Palmer Hall did two books, and I'm going to tell you about both of them. One is called Lectures on Ancient Philosophy. And in this book, Manly P. P. Hall, I highly, highly recommend everyone hearing my voice. Get this book by Manly P. Hall called Lectures on Ancient Philosophy, and which is a thick book which he asks, uh, people ask him questions. And as I said, I think he's one of the greatest teachers that ever lived. You read his answers to the questions. Where do we go when we die? Why, how, how, how are we to understand who we are as, as men and women? Where did we come from? Who created us? Uh, you know, wh- why is this? Why is that? Well, I think we can also, at a later date, we'll add his uh, lectures on our show where people can download the oh, lectures. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, I think that's a service we should uh, we absolutely we'll offer have here. We absolutely uh, right. We'll get with our webmaster. But if you've ever had just the normal, regular questions that thinking people ask, you know, why is this? Why is that? What is the, why does the Bible say this? And why does the Bible say that? And, and when you die, where do you go? And what happens if you commit suicide and there's God on the other side? What happens? And all kinds of questions that people have, have had over the centuries, you know, uh, nothing new under the sun. The kind of questions that we are penetratingly asking today, well, you know, the Greeks were asking the same question. Well, Manley P. Hall in his book, Lectures on Ancient Philosophy, answers 
just hundreds of those kinds of questions. About and you've had dis- what, personal discussions with Manley before he passed. Oh, I mean, yeah. Was it a, I'm oh, sure that was a true an pleasure. Incredible uh, experience to sit and listen to a wise old man who, who was, without a doubt, in my mind, was one of the greatest men that ever lived. But get this book, Lectures on Ancient Philosophy by Manley P. Hall. Also, if you're interested in Judaism and Christianity from a philosopher's point of view, Manley P. Hall had two books you really have to get. If you're Jewish or if you're interested in the Jewish religion and you wondered about the Old Testament and what is this they call the Old Testament, the Torah the, the, uh, or the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, when the, what is this Old Testament all about? Well, the best of uh, the best I have ever found is Manley P. Hall's book called Old Testament Wisdom. And he explains where these stories have come from, what they actually mean, and what the words meant back then, and what these stories actually represent, and how it was understood originally, not the way you think you understand them today. Called Old Testament Wisdom by Manly P. Hall. And the second book that I would highly suggest you get with that is the New Testament. The New Testament of Jesus, as I've said, is an encoded story. Well, Manly P. Hall has a book on the New Testament. The first one was Old Testament Wisdom. We'll get the second one with it. The New Testament is called The Mythical Christ. The Mystical Christ, Religion as a Personal Spirit, Spiritual Experience. He explains what Christ means, what Jesus represented, what is the actual essence of the New Testament. What does all of this stuff actually, in fact, mean? Not what the churches have crammed down your throat, but what did the actual words, the etymology of the words, what was the real story of the Old and the New Testament? So get both of those books from Manly P. Hall. All right, the next one is by Manley P. Hall, and this one you've got to get to. This is a, a absolute, the, the, two of, the next two are going to be by Manley P. Hall, but you've got to get both of these. One is called The Wisdom of the Knowing Ones, Gnosticism, the Key to Esoteric Christianity. People have no idea in the world that where Christianity actually began in the first century, when you go back to the very first Christians, they were Gnostics. And the Apostle Paul that Christianity recognizes today as probably the most important author in the New Testament, all Christians will tell you the most important author in the New Testament was the Apostle Paul. Well, the Apostle Paul was not a Christian. He was a Gnostic. The words, the terms, the ideas, and the concepts came directly out of Gnosticism. So if you want to understand New Testament theology and what is called today the Paulinist theology, Paulinist are the the ideas of, of the Apostle Paul, he wrote most of the New Testament. And if you want to understand who Paul was, he was a Gnostic, spelled G N O S T I C, Gnostic. He was not a Christian. He never saw Jesus, never met Jesus, didn't know anything about him. So he was a Gnostic. So if you want to understand Christianity, you better understand Gnosticism and the Apostle Paul. So uh, Manly P. Hall did a whole booklet on Manly P. Hall's book, Wisdom of the Knowing Ones, Gnosticism, the Key to Esoteric Christianity. And another book, that is probably the the most important uh, uh, for Christians today. Everybody talks about, especially the last days, the end times, the end of the world coming, and all that. All that's based on the on the New Testament book of Revelation. The last book in the Bible is called the Book of Revelation. They make it movies and television shows on the History Channel, etc., about Revelation, the Book of Revelation, and the end of the world, and all that. Well. Manley P. Hall <clears throat> has done a masterful book called Apocalypse Attributed to St. John. And what he does is he tells you exactly who actually, in fact, wrote the book of Revelation. Where did it actually come from? Who, in fact, wrote the book of Revelation? What was it actually saying? And with the etymology of the words and the terms and the phrases it uses, what was the actual story and who actually wrote this book of Revelation? Incredible. 
It's called The Apocalypse Attributed to St. John. And to uh, one, there's a couple of more. You need to get Helena Blavatsky, B-L-A-V-A-T-S-K-Y, Helena P. Blavatsky's uh, two books. It's a two-book set called Ices Unveil. Uh, I think it's probably one of the most interesting and juiciest books I've ever come across. Ices Unveil is on our website. You can go to Amazon and order it. Ices Unveil by Helena Blavatsky. Uh, the second book is on religion, and she opens up the world to religion, where all of the ancient religions came from, all the ancient teachings of the world, all of it has come from. Get the set. It's called Ices Unveil Part 1 and Part 2. It's on our website. And since we're running out of time, I'm going to speed it up because i only got a couple more. Uh, one of the most important books that I have myself, I own the copyright to, was called Symbols, Sex, and the Stars. It was written by Ernest Busenbart, B-U-S-E-M-B-A-R-K. I did the, uh, in the new printing, I did the preface for it. You have to get this book. It's called Symbols, Sex, and the Stars. It's the most easily read book I have ever come across about religion. It explains all of the symbols in churches and the Catholic Church and the Protestant religion in the Bible, where all of the ideas and the religions of the church have come from. Where did they come from? Where did they start? And it's so easily to read. It's so well written and so concise. And um, it, it, it's, it's a gold mine of occult knowledge and hidden knowledge about the church you go to and what the symbols in the church really mean and where they came from. And this is why they, one of the things it brings out in Symbol, Sex, and Stars is that when you are, want to be born again, when you're going to become a Christian, you want to be born again. Well, how do you become born again? Well, when you were first born, you came out of your mother's water. Her water broke, and you were born. You came out of your mother when her water broke. Therefore, if you're going to be born again, you have to go back into your mother's water. And so your mother is Mother Nature, Mother Earth. She's your mother. She gave birth to you. Why? Because you weren't born on Mars and caught a bus here. You were born here. And so your Earth is your mother. And so if to be born again, you go back into your mother's water. You go into a river or a stream and have someone dunk you under the water, and then you come out. And you were born again. That's all this stuff is. It's just sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> it's just sex. This is where you came from. This is where you're going back to to be born again. So get this book, Symbols, Sex, and the Stars. Probably the best book ever written on religion. And <clears throat> Stellar Theology and Masonic Astronomy. Very important for anyone who wants to understand the stars and how they impact the world today and religion and government and secret societies and philosophy, how the, the heavens was, you know, how we understand the heavens and how these stars and symbols all come together and give us the world that we live in today. And this is a very important book and I own the copyright on it, but I've given the copyright to Symbol, Sex and Stars and Stellar Theology and Masonic Astronomy. I gave them a long, I gave them away a long time ago to the publishers. So you really need to get Stellar Theology and Masonic Astronomy. Absolutely fascinating book about the heavens and the way the world views the heavens today in relation to religion, government, secret societies. They use the heavens, and you need to know how it works. And the last book is Occult Theocracy, Part 1 and Part 2. Occult Theocracy is quite simply one of the best books ever. It's a very thick book. Two parts, Occult Theocracy, by Lady uh, Edith, Starr Mil Edith Starr Miller, M-I-L-L-E-R. Again, it's on our website. It's on Amazon. Go there on our top of the page and, and get this book through Amazon called Occult Theocracy. What she has done is taken uh, probably a hundred or more secret societies, cults, groups, churches, Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, like I said, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, Christadelphians, 
uh, Rosicrucians, the Illuminati, all the, all the different religious sects and cults in the world and where they actually came from. It's just a short history of every single cult in the world. The Ku Klux Klan, the, uh, the, um, all the different groups and cults and, and, and sects around the world, where they actually came from, who started them, who financed them, and where did they come from. It's called Occult Theocracy. Fascinating book, and it's in two parts, on Amazon.com. So all of these, uh, are, are will, as I said, they will be on our website. You can get them all through Amazon.com. All of these books I have brought to you because I feel they're extraordinarily important in your education of the world in which you live, which I call the occult world, the hidden wisdom that's been hidden from you. So go on, the, go on our website. Go to the top of the page. You'll see Amazon.com. Click on and get the books you want. Yep, we got lots more, but the ones I, I outlined to you today were the most important, and we'll have that many more coming later. Thank you again for listening. This is Jordan Maxwell. <laughs>